Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video on functions. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to name and define the parts of a function, so the domain, the codomain, the range, and the image, and you should be able to represent a function using an arrow diagram. Functions are basic math objects that are closely related to sets. They appear basically everywhere in math. So we shouldn't need too much justification for why we care about functions. I'm sure you've seen them a lot before. In this section, we're going to analyze them a little bit more formally and a little more carefully so we can start to prove things about them. We start with a definition in scare quotes of a function. This isn't a real definition, We'll see a formal definition uh, later on in the course. For now, we just need the idea of what a function is. A function f from a to b is a rule, or a machine if you want to think of it that way, that associates every element uh, from capital A to an element f of a inside capital B. So in other words, for every point in a, uh, those will be your inputs, and your outputs will be uh, all of the elements or sorry, any element from B. When we write a function like this, you're guaranteeing that every element from A is allowed to be put into the function. Let's start with a non-example, because we'll see many examples later on in the course. Consider f from the ray zero to infinity, all the way to r, defined by f of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. This is not a function. It's not a function because 4 gets associated to 2 and to minus 2. So you have one input that goes to two different places. That's not allowed for functions. So now let's get back to the world of functions. If f goes from a to b, then we call capital A the domain of the function and we call b the codomain. Now, if someone was to just give you an algebraic expression like f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1, we would typically mean f has domain reals except 1 and codomain the reals. Or if we wanted to be very careful, we might write f from the reals minus 1 to the reals minus 0. So the reals except 1 to the reals except 0. Both of these would be acceptable ways to represent this function. Now let's consider another function that doesn't go from the reals to the reals. This one goes from numbers to all sorts of stuff. Let g go from 1, 2, 3 to the set Mike 7 empty set. And the definition will be g of 1 is equal to Mike, g of 2 is equal to Mike, and g of 3 is equal to the empty set. So here, the domain is the set 1, 2, 3, because it's written right here. And the codomain is the set that's written right here, Mike 7, empty set. This is one way to represent a function by listing out explicitly what the function does to every element. Now, this is OK, but it's hard to get a sense of what the function's actually doing. So to do that, we represent it by an arrow diagram. An arrow diagram looks like this. We write our domain A on the left-hand side, we write our codomain B on the right-hand side, and then for every element in A, we draw an arrow from the point to the point that it goes to in B. So we know that 1 and 2 both get sent to Mike, and 3 gets sent to the empty set. This is a helpful way to, dot, to represent a function. Now let's consider another example of the codomain and why it's important. Consider the function f from the closed interval minus 2 to 1 to the open interval minus 1 to 10. And it's defined by f of x equals x squared. What are the following three values? Take a moment to compute them right now, and be warned, this is a trick question. What is f of 1? f of 1 and f of minus 1 are both 1 squared or minus 1 squared, so they're both 1. What's f of 2? Well, 
This is a, the, the trick question part of it. It's not defined because two is not in the domain of f. f only allows us to put things into it that are from the domain. Since here I've explicitly written that the domain is minus two to one, I'm not allowed to put two into it since two isn't in the domain. Now, you might be upset by this. You might say, well, x squared is defined for all real numbers. I should be allowed to put two into it. But this is not the way you should think. You should think if it's if the domain is explicitly declared, that's the only things that are allowed to be put into it. Next, we move on to the definition of the range, which is closely related to the definition of codomain um, and will maybe make more sense for you. So if f is a function from a to b, then the range, or sometimes we call it the image of f, is the collection of all f of a, where a is an element of capital A. In other words, it's all possible outputs of the function. If you think of your function as a machine, then you pour in all of the elements of capital A, all of the elements of the domain into it, and the range is everything that falls out. A technical way of describing this, but one that's quite handy is, y is in the range of f if and only if there's a point in the domain that outputs that y. So that's how you know something is an output if there is something in the domain that pushes it out. Let's look at the example we just looked at. Here the domain is minus two to one and the codomain is minus one to 10. We can read them straight off the function. We don't need to know anything about how the function is defined. To compute the range, we need to see what are the possible outputs of this function. So given this domain, the smallest thing you can get is zero and the largest thing you can get is four and you can get everything in between. So here we see that the range and the codomain can be different. Let's see another example. So this is the example uh, with the arrow diagram that we defined before. Again, we can read off the domain and codomain right from the function. Let's go through slowly how we compute the range. By definition, the range is when you plug in all of the, do all the elements of the domain, what are the outputs you get? So this will be g of one, g of two, and g of three. These outputs are mic, mic, and empty set. Since sets don't care about repeats, then this is just the set mic, empty set. We didn't include seven because there's no element of the domain that outputs seven. Now we move on to a closely related definition called the image. If f from a to b is a function and c is a subset of the domain a, then the image of c under f is the set f of c, which is the collection of all f of c such that c is in c. This should not be a, a math bb c, this should be this c. In other words, it's all of the outputs of the function when you restrict yourself to only the set c. The range is what happens when you pour into the, your function all of the elements of the domain. If you only pour in the elements from the set C, then you get the image of C. Also note that here on the left hand side, this is a slightly bad notation. Here when we say f of something, normally we say that they have to be elements of the set A, but we use this notation to denote all possible outputs. It's slightly bad notation. Let's look at some examples to get this uh, under wraps. If g is the function from the naturals to the reals, defined by g of x is equal to minus one to the x, and e is the collection of even natural numbers, then what's the codomain, the range, and the image of the function, uh, sorry, the image of the evens under this function? The codomain we can read right off of the function, it's the reals. The range is all possible outputs, and the all possible outputs are either minus one or one. And then what happens if we only plug in even numbers? 
What happens to this function if you only plug in even numbers? Well, the outputs are only going to be 1. So here we see that the image of a function, uh, the image of a set, can be different from its range. Some observations about codomain, range, and domain are that the range is always a subset of the codomain. Range is everything that's hit. The codomain is anything that could maybe get hit, potentially. The image of C is always a subset of the codomain. And in fact, the image is always a subset of the range. The range is everything that gets hit when you use every element of the domain. This is everything that gets hit when you restrict to only putting in elements from C. Finally, if you look at F, the image of the domain under the function, you'll get exactly the range. So you should think about these things and why they're true. Finally, let's look at an exam, a question that often shows up with students um, and one that makes them sometimes a bit upset. It's why do we use codomain when range seems to work perfectly well? The main observation is that it can be useful to use a wider codomain if you don't know the complete function ahead of time. Computing an exact range is often difficult in practice. Let's see an example uh, of where this might show up. So imagine you want to define a function called country that takes an input x, which is a year in which the Olympics were held, and it outputs the name of the country that won the most medals that year. Now, what would be the codomain of this function? Well, the codomain would be all possible countries in the world, including those that no longer exist, but won a medal at some point. Now, what would be the range of this function? What would be the actual outputs of this function if you ran it? Well, the problem is that this requires research to find out. Here, you wouldn't necessarily know ahead of time what is actually going to be achieved. You just know what could maybe get hit. And this is part of the reason why we um, use codomain instead of range sometimes. If you're defining a function and you can say, well, at most it has these 300 outputs, then someone else can use that and define a function that handles all 300 of those inputs. Um, they don't need to necessarily know all of the exact outputs. Let's take a moment to reflect. What are the key parts of a function? If a function is given to you explicitly as f from a to b, what two features of the function can you already identify? What is the difference between the codomain and the range of a function? Thank you very much, and have a good day.